Hello everybody, my name is Mathis and welcome to the Judge Mathis channel. To the surprise of nobody here, I have been collecting big box PC games and just old games in general for the better part of three or four months now. Uh, at least seriously for the better part of three or four months. I've been collecting the games since I started the channel. Every time I did a game, I made sure I went on my way to get a physical copy of it. Uh, but recently, I have been doing update videos and showing the collection and people seem to have really enjoyed it. So much so that a bunch of people have reached out and asked if they wanted to give me or asked if they, I would take rather their old big box PC games. Um, they've said they've just forgotten about them or they've just been sitting there not doing anything and they'd want them to go to a home that are, is going to take care of them and they wondered if I would do that. And I said, of course, if you don't want them and if the other option is to throw them out, I will gladly take care of them, put them in my collection and uh, just take good, good care of them, as I can say about three or four different times now. Um, so I actually got two gigantic gigantic boxes from a viewer and fan named Zerabyte on Twitter uh, for the sake of uh, privacy, no real name will be used. Um, but he told me, he sent me pictures of all the stuff that he had and asked, do I want it? And I said, uh, yeah, I'll gladly take those if you don't want them and you plan on just kind of leaving them up there or throwing them out. And so he said, yeah, he'll send them my way. So the two, and I mean big boxes are here. I'm gonna go through them with you and uh, we'll, we'll talk about the games as they come out. A bunch of people have said they wanted to send me stuff as well. So if you see, if you were thinking about sending me something and you see something in these boxes that you were planning on sending, you know, don't worry about sending me duplicates or any of that stuff. I don't necessarily want duplicates, nor do I want you to kind of send them, send me something that I might already have and then feel like you wasted your time. So uh, we're just going to go right to opening some stuff and see what uh, Zerbite decided to send me. All right. So I don't have a, a super great setup here. Uh, I don't really have an office table uh, and my desk is all monitors, keyboards, and my PC and it wasn't really in a good spot to really pull out and use. So I'm using the floor, trying to make this as viewer comfortable as possible, I guess. We're just going to go through, like I said, this is a huge box. I opened this one up. We're going to go open the second one after and we're going to go through the games and see what this guy ended up sending me. Let's, um, let's see. So bear with me if this is not the smoothest, best looking setup, but I am doing my best. All right. Let's pop the sucker open. And uh, I apologize, I hope the boxes didn't get too dinged up. The, um, the guy who was bringing them over, uh, the UPS guy, did not seem to be taking particularly good care of this. Let's start with what I know here, right away. The PC version and the weird trapezoid version of Final Fantasy VII. God damn. So Final Fantasy VII is something I played through to completion multiple times on the PlayStation 1. Uh, but I never ever played it on PC uh, when it came out. And it's something I, I only learned that it was out on PC way, way after it had come out. That's a really cool find. Funnily enough, this is something I was looking on, uh, grabbing relatively cheap if I could on eBay. And I, there was a few out there, but then uh, Zerbite reached out and he showed me what he had. And I was like, you know what? I'll just wait and see if he wants to send me stuff. As far as I know, these should all be complete in box. I will be going through them individually. Uh, after this video is recorded, but that's an awesome first find. And to go along with it, Final Fantasy VIII PC. Not a gatefold box, actually. A lot simpler than the Final Fantasy VII one. And I do wonder if that was because maybe Final Fantasy VII didn't sell as well on PC. But clearly enough to, re to send out Final Fantasy VIII on PC. Oh, something for Maya. <laughs> what is this? Oh, my God, Fancy Feast. <laughs> She actually loved these. That's great. Looks like next up we'll just grab on the top and work our way down. So there's some Dungeons and Dragons stuff in here uh, that I'm super excited for. And um, this is uh, this is one of them. Uh, this is the Dungeons and Dragons Stronghold Kingdom Simulator. It's an SSI game, uh, which they did a bunch of RPGs back in the day. And uh, yeah, you can see the pictures here. Not entirely sure if this is a complete inbox or not. Uh, I'm gonna pop it open real quick. It sounds like it just might be loose discs. I assume these are the two discs. And it does come with a manual and some other stuff. So this looks like it's complete inbox here. Build and command your own kingdom in the Dungeons and Dragons game world. For the first time ever, you can run your own kingdom in the legendary D&D game world. In this remarkable kingdom simulator, your goal is to become emperor by building and expanding your stronghold in competition against opposing computer controlled kingdoms. So this looks to be some sort of maybe 4X style game, management game. Betrayal at Condor. A Rift War legacy. 
Dynamics VGA three and a half inch discs. Again, nothing. Something I've not heard of before. Epic fantasy role playing from the mind of Raymond E. Feist. That looks very 90s. All right. Actually, this is something I already have, but he sent it to me, and I said I would take it because it's in way better condition than mine is. Oh, see, okay, this is actually a different version than the one I have. That might be why it feels lighter. This is the CD-ROM version, where the version I had was a three and a half inch floppy version. Cool. So not only do I have a way better box now, but I have a more modern version of the game that's on CD. You don't know Jack, the irrelevant quiz and party game. This game has been around clearly forever. The Jackbox party packs are still around today. Uh, this one, Windows 95 and 3.1, so clearly an older, older, older version of the game. And uh, it looks a lot more basic, but I mean, I'm assuming it's all the same, you know? F-19 Stealth Fighter. Award-winning best simulation by the Software Publishers Association. Another Microprose game, you can see at the bottom. Flight simulators are something I never got into when I was younger. Uh, but I was, I don't know why, because I was so into simulation games in general, like uh, mech and stuff. But I, I guess I was more on the uh, the fantasy and sci-fi side of simulation than realism. Um, but this is really, really cool. And the box is so heavy. Holy crap. This is cool, though. Looks like we've got a loose CD, but it probably, oh, it goes to this. He, oh, the box opened up. Okay, so like I said, things are going to get jostled around. This is Myth 2 Soul Blighter, Windows 95, 98, a bungee game. Oh, crap. And it has a gatefold. And it looks like a top-down action RPG from what I can tell. The box art is wild. <laughs> this guy, that is some 90s CG right there modeling. Um, but it looks neat. It's just all out of the box, so I'm going to have to put it all back in. I have to compliment Zerbite who sent this all to me because this stuff is in incredible shape. Like, all these boxes are in fantastic shape, which is really, really rare. Uh, Might and Magic 8 Day of the Destroyer, 3DO. Might and Magic, obviously a well-known series, still even around today. Uh, it's, this one is, um, these are, this is before, like, Heroes of Might and Magic, which a lot of people may know better. Apologies, I'm moving the microphone just a little bit there. Um, this is like, you know, first person, uh, stuff. This doesn't look first person, though. So I never got into the old Might and Magic stuff until Heroes of Might and Magic came around, but... Um, if you ever played, like, Grim uh, Grimrock, like, that style of game came from this. Day of the Destroyer. That is awesome. Now, this is, like, a box filled with stickers. Codemaster, uh, uh, Codemasters, Operation Flashpoint, Cold War Crisis. Full multiplayer compatibility. It just looks like a, a first-person war game Tom Clancy style. Uh, this box, we're gonna take this out. This is looking a little rough. Um, this could just be because the guy who was handling the box, yeah. Damn. The guy who was handling the box did not handle it with care whatsoever, but... But this is Might and Magic 6, the Mandate of Heaven limited edition version of the game. Includes Might and Magic 1 through 5, New World Computing again. This is a cool box. It's a shame it got all beat up in the, uh, in the shipping. It's always my worry with things like this if, uh, you know, things get beat up along the way. I mean, everything seems to have survived relatively well, but some things maybe not so much. Putting Might and Magic aside, away from the other boxes so I know to work on it temporarily uh now this is a game i did play uh when i was younger crusaders of might and magic i have weird memories of it i think this was also out on the playstation one and i played the playstation one version which clearly is the worst version but it's an action role-playing game uh and this was out and around the time more open worldy games were starting to come into into play and it was really exciting to get like big environments to explore and you could kind of just build your own character. Uh, I don't remember. I don't have good memories of this game. I don't remember enjoying it very much. Um, but I do remember it. And it's part of that Might and Magic world. More Might and Magic. We might as well go through the Might and Magic train here. This is uh, for Blood and Honor, Might and Magic 7. Uh, EB exclusive mini hint book inside. I gotta know if that's still in there. Oh, I'll be so excited if it is. But I don't expect it to be. But that's really neat. This, again, box is in incredible shape. I gotta know. I gotta know, is the mini hint book still in here or not? Doesn't look like it's still in here. It didn't expect it to be, but it looks like everything else is still in here. This, here's a Mighty Magic 3. Okay, really fun story with this. I remember playing this game at my friend's house and borrowing it from him and then never returning it. Like, we played it at his, at his house. We played, like, a long game, and he said I could borrow it. And I never brought it back. Oh, this is awesome. This is so cool. Holy crap. That is really awesome. 
That is childhood memories out my butthole. There is another Might and Magic in here. I caught a glance at this one when I was putting this away. What is this? Might and Magic World of Zine. First of all, this box is boring as hell. Is it like a software kit? Uh, let's see. Enter the land of Zine, a mythical place ruled by two villainous overlords. Solve the many quests and puzzles as you attempt uh, to unravel its secrets. Animated, it's always oh, an adventure game in the style of like Myst? What? Is this an adventure game? Did Might and Magic go adventure style? World of Zine. This is, this, it's CD-ROM. You gotta advertise that when this was coming out. I've never seen this before. <laughs> this is, this is like, guys, you have no idea. This is like Christmas for me. Like, I don't know which one to pull out next. What is this? Oh, this is more relevant today than anything. Tom Clancy's Politica. The str uh, strategy game of political intrigue in modern day Russia. It looks a little bit kind of Europa Universality, or at least a Paradox Grand Strategy. Maybe you shouldn't think like, you know, automatically EU4, but... That's my grand strategy knowledge. Oh my God, it's so heavy. Holy crap. I know I talked about Westwood in one of my recent videos when I talked about, when I was talking about Knox, but Command and Conquer was probably the RTS I played the most following Warcraft 2. Uh, I did play Warcraft 3 all the way through, but Command and Conquer and that entire series, I played probably way more than I played Warcraft 3. Um, Command and Conquer, a little bit more casual, I guess, maybe, than Warcraft is, but oh, I loved, I loved Command and Conquer. I played so much multiplayer of this as well with my friend. That is awesome. And it looks like there's an expansion right in the box, the Covert Operations. Now, there was a time where expansion packs, third-party expansion packs, were sellable in retail. Um, they were not necessarily by Westwood. I don't know if this is one of them, but it kind of looks like it. It doesn't look like it's... No, no, it looks like it, it actually is Westwood. So this is just a 15 extra missions that go along with Command and Conquer. Um, this is Max Payne. So fuck, Max Payne is an incredible game, first of all. Um, limited edition mouse pad. Again, I'm gonna have to check to see if it's there. But Max Payne, one of my favorite games of all time. An incredible game. Uh, all three of them are really, really good, but the first one obviously holds a special kind of place in my heart. Can't go wrong with, uh, with Worms. Worms are Armageddon. Can't go wrong with Worms at all. Next up is something I saw him take a picture of, and I had no idea what this is, and I still don't know what it is. Knights of Zentar. Like a weeb game. Shigeru Almighty Mabuchi. Uh, art by Atsushi Wild Bill Shimoda. They both have nicknames. And it just has pictures in the back, and it looks like an SNES-style RPG. What, what is this game? But inside, it just has a CD, a mouse pad. I don't know what this is. I don't know what, this is going to be a game I cover on Judge Mathis. It has to be. I don't know what this is. All right, next up is Lands of Lore, the Throne of Chaos, Westwood game. Westwood Studios, an inspired fantasy RPG experience. So it looks like it's like Legend of Grimrock or uh, more, more older, like Might and Magic style. Go around, kill things, inventory management, and stuff like that which is cool. I've never heard of this. All right, and this is exciting because this is one of three things I'm looking to own over the course of time. And this is a Fallout game, but it's Fallout Tactics. Third of those, which is more just, it's just a tactics game for the most part. Never played it, never played through it. Uh, I remember reading mediocre things about it when it came out. I think this is like original Xbox and PS2 era game, I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Next up, this is really, this is a game that most people are gonna know or at least heard of. Phantasmagoria, Roberta Williams point and click adventure game, horror game. Pray it's only a nightmare. I think this was the last one of Roberta Williams' games, maybe one of the last ones. Again, in immaculate condition, the book feels, I mean, this box feels super, super heavy. Full FMV craziness, a lot of sex, a lot of blood, a lot of murder. Uh, really nice to have. I have a few of her games already, so let's go right next to them. Another repeat, I already have this, but uh, I was happy to take it, Half-Life. Really, really, really great, great condition box. I love the box for Half-Life, it's awesome. Rip, we'll never have Half-Life 3. So this is Blood and Magic, Advanced D&D, free exclusive TSR Forgotten Realms book, The Abduction Inside. Real-time battle in the Forgotten Realms world, so. This must be a time, you know, AD&D &D is where you start, you see it, Forgotten Realms, I think for the first time. Ultra Rare Dragon Master's Dice. Oh, I gotta see if that's in there. I won't count on it, but I really wanna see if it's in there. Some screenshots, really, really word heavy back of the box, but it's interplay. Looks like it's a point and click kind of tactics top down game. Oh, it's in here. Oh, the dice is in here. 
That's so awesome! That is so freaking cool! Oh, I love it, man. I love it. I love it. I love it. Lighthouse, the dark being. Outwit evil in a supernatural mechanical world. Sierra, so most likely point and click adventure game. This is the enhanced 2.0 version because before there was the internet, if you needed to get updates, you needed to either ask for a mail in like disks that would send you an update to fix broken bugs or wait until a version that came out that was uh, fixed up uh, was available. It looks like Mist style point and click adventure. Not a very convincing back of the box to sell me on it, but really cool to have it anyway to go into uh, my my ex slowly expanding Sierra adventure game collection. Return of Crondor, another Sierra game, the official sequel to the best-selling RPG, which I don't think was in the box. Maybe it was, and I'm forgetting about it. Was it? I can't remember now. Um, but it's another RPG by Sierra, so not point-and-click game. This is the SSI stuff. SSI stuff I'm very pumped for. Uh, they were very popular with D&D games in the, back in the day. First one we're going to pull out, we'll just go left to right. Menzor Burzan, an SSI game. And it takes place in D&D 2nd Edition. And uh, these are all like, you know, you're looking at Might and Magic style games. Where you're equipping a party, you're going first person, like grid-like maneuvers. Sweet high-res 256 color VGA gives, uh, <laughs> what does it say? Gives super VGA quality with a standard VGA card. Yeah, I wonder how true that was. Next up on the SSI, uh, I apologize if I lean into the mic, by the way. This is a cool box. Hold on, I just gotta fix it. It doesn't look like it's D&D. It looks like it's their own original game. But is this like cellophane protecting what the actual the box underneath is? Just like gives a cool depth perspective. Windows 95. Ooh, is it an RTS? Yeah, this looks like an RTS. It's an SSI RTS developed by Dreamforge entertainment not entertainment entertainment and the sequel warwind 2 human onslaught a little bit less uh drastic of a cover a little more boring looks like humans will invade un unlike warcraft where orcs invade the human lands this is uh also yeah it's an rts so the first one did well enough where they decided to get a second one so this is classic ssi the eye of the beholder trilogy eye of the beholder one two and three well, Eye of the Beholder, then The Legend of Darkmoon, and then Assault on Myth Draenor. Uh, Eye of the Beholder, free clue book inside. Ooh, I'd have to see if that's actually in there still. But again, all the classic SSI, you know, first person RPGs to have all three of the Eye of the Beholder trilogy in one box is fantastic. All right, down to the last two of this box. We still got another box to go. Uh, these are, they're both uh, Dark Sun. And people have told me the Dark Sun SSI games are incredible. Um, and Dark Sun is a, is a world I'd love to play in D&D &D that I haven't yet, but Wake of the Ravager, the hottest AD&D &D game world just got hotter. So this is more top down. This is not the, the, what we're used to, uh, as far as the first person ones. And then the last one is AD&D &D second edition, Dark Sun Shattered Lands, which I assume it'll be similar. Yep. Similar. Uh, I assume, is this one first? I don't know which one is first. I'll have to look it up. Which one is, uh which one is first in the two of them, but that's crazy too. All right, so I just pop open the last box of the two. You can see it's the same it's the same size. It's still ridiculously huge, full of games. Um, so right out the gate, we've got ourselves Indiana Jones and the Fate of Atlantis, a LucasArts uh, point and click adventure game, CD-ROM enhanced edition, uh, free hint book enclosed. We'll see if that's actually in there, but yeah, it's typical like classic Lucas LucasArts point and click adventure. This one we'll just take out because I already have it, uh, but I, I, Deus Ex, he, uh, he showed it to me. I was like, you know, if you don't want it, again, I'll take it. So another copy of Deus Ex. This is an un... Oh, no, it is opened. Kingdom Life of Crime. Violent subject matter. Be careful, kids. 16 human gangsters with LAN internet. Is it just a multiplayer game? Built on the Quake 2 engine. So it looks like it might be a first-person shooter of some sort. This is a weird-looking box, man. Uh, but I might keep the plastic on it just to maintain, make sure box integrity. Next up is a classic, oh god, it's got sparkles on it. King's Quest V by Roberta Williams, Sierra. Oh god, you know King's Quest, man. This is the fifth one. I don't have any of them, so this is my first one. But King's Quest is a classic, and I'm super happy to have this. Now, there's a few of these games in here, and I'm excited to pop them open, but the Ultima series. Now, Ultima Underworld, the Stoogian Abyss... Uh, origin game. There's a really interesting story actually behind this game that I 
I, I can't remember 100%, but this, this one was like, had, I feel like it had trouble development for some reason, and like a lot of its funding got pulled. But to have an Ulta, there's a bunch of Ultima games in here, and I'm going to go through them uh, now if I can get to them all right now. So the only other Ultima that I can see is this huge Dragon Edition of Ultima uh, 9 Ascension. The Ultima series is a game I've always heard of, and obviously Ultima Online was, was a big part of that, but never really got into. But my friend Dan Giesling loves Ultima. So we got Shadowcaster, another origin game designed by Raven Software. I wonder if these are the same guys who ended up making the X-Men or uh, the Wolverine Origins game, which was actually really, really good. Again, looks like another first person kind of a uh, grid based RPG. Next up is the most boring box I've seen so far out of this pack, Castles. The boring box for a boring name. Design and build authentic medieval castles. You need to pick a good site that is easily defendable from attack and then decide where to put towers. Next up is Realms of Arcania Star Trail? I'm assuming that's what it's supposed to say. Uh, Surtech, a fantasy role-playing simulation. What does that even mean? Smooth scrolling 3D environment, CD-ROM, fully animated, phased time. What does phased time mean? That's like its own bullet point, phased time. Then we've got here Disciples 2 Dark Prophecy. Five extra quests. It's a strategy game, collector's edition. And it's visually stunning. It looks like a top-down, like, RTS-style RPG strategy game of some sort. Uh, I feel like I've seen this game around, but I've never, ever, ever played it before. It's a time of evil. So on the top here, so this is exciting. I saw he took a picture of this. Uh, Doom Companion Edition, maps of every level, uh, game recording level editor, hints, cheat codes, sound editors, plus episode one of Knee Deep in the Dead. So what's interesting is Doom was a share, uh, like a, a freeware, a shareware game, and physical copies were not something that you saw too much of. That's really cool that there is one, and I, I, I knew there were some around. The, the history specifically behind its freeware and shareware, uh, you know, origins and, and, and how it came to got box copies and stuff. A little bit, I'm a little rusty on, but I was so excited to see that he had a, a box copy of Doom. Uh, an EA Games game. Oh, American McGee's Alice. A game that I never played, but I knew people loved. And they made a sequel to um, a few years back. And people did not like it very much. But this is like a cult classic. American McGee's Alice is a platformer, action platformer. Really twisted, really, really messed up game that people adored and i never played uh, but my friend did and he even played the sequel and he wasn't a huge fan of it but this is cool to have this next one right here really exciting uh it's the heart of winter expansion pack to icewind dale which is great because i only have icewind dale without the expansions so to have this i can throw up on my shelf right next to it uh further puts me toward completing the forgotten realms and uh, black isle studio versions of DD games collection really happy to have that <laughs> what is this heavy metal yeah of course it's heavy metal ritual entertainment okay i know those guys what is this oh my god is this screaming early 2000s to late 90s to you because it certainly is to me heavy metal is the ultimate teenage fantasy come to life mind-bending animation intense violence and hard driving rock might be having a hard driving something else that rhymes with a rock while playing this game if you're like 13. So this next one is a game I've been looking to cover. Actually, I've been looking for ways to get it up and running on the computer, how hard it is to get a copy. And uh, I saw it was in the in the stuff that he was planning on sending me. It's a game I had heard of, heard of, but never played. And I'm so excited. Giants Citizen of Kabuto. This game is a genre bending, genre mixing uh, game for the computer. I think it was on consoles as well. Uh, that has an amazing following that still has people playing the multiplayer today. So this is a game I don't know much about and I don't want to spoil myself too much on. I kind of want to discover it for myself. But needless to say, when I saw this was coming my way, I was incredibly excited. And uh, I'm very, very thankful for this. So thank you. Next up, Sacrifice. Best PC game of the show for ECTS 2000. Oh my God, this game is awesome. By Shiny Entertainment. So I know Shiny and they've done some good stuff in the past. It is an RTS though, but the camera angle is a little bit different. Is it a god game? The gods look upon your sacrifice with greedy eyes. Please the gods and be granted unique spells and abilities. Cast over 50 devastating spells and summon over 50 terrifying creatures. So this looks like it might be an RTS slash 
God game, Sacrifice. Whoa, and we're dropping it. All right, a little bit of a camera angle to change. My camera went from 30 minutes of power to two minutes of power very, very quickly. So this is Ultima Underworld 2, Labyrinth of Worlds. I, again, I don't know much about the development of this one. I thought the first Underworld was a little bit of a bad development cycle, but apparently not bad enough to not have a sequel for it. Another freeware, shareware game in a weird little box, Heretic. This is from the Doom people. Really cool little box. I think I played Heretic when I, yeah, I definitely played Heretic when I was younger. Game actually scared the crap out of me. And then nice and all boxed up, Doom 2. So we got Doom 1, Doom 2, and Heretic. This weird kind of like a lot of stuff going on in the corner with words on the box type thing. Really red background, kind of kind of it's thing for these style of boxes. A CD-ROM version of the game. Don't know anything about this. Includes speech pack, English, French, German, and uh, English, French, and German speech and gameplay. So if you uh, wanted to play in any of those, oh, any of those languages, you can. Uh, looks like an Ultima game, like a classic Ultima game, but I have never played it. But it looks really cool. Voluntarily rated MP13. This is another game I know of because I played it on the original Xbox, and this is the longest journey. It is a game that. People freaking love. It is a point-click adventure game. Uh, it can be known for its really convoluted puzzles, but the story is apparently absolutely incredible. And I do say I played it on the original Xbox, but I did not play much of it, and I remember none of it. So this is another game I, I definitely have written on the list of things I'd like to return to and check out eventually. But this is a uh, really, really neat to have. Another great one, Age of Empires. You cannot go wrong with the Age of Empires game. This is an incredible... Great real-time strategy game as, as what I would classify it as. Sorry, bonk at the camera there. I Endless hours in Age of Empires. Mostly Age of Empires 2, but it's still Age of Empires 1. Next up, Emperor 2 Battle for Dune. So Dune, Westwood Studios game, of course, was another incredible uh, RTS series that I never played, but I've been told so many times that I should. Actually, it looks like this is an expansion maybe or this might just be the second one or the maybe it's the first one i can't tell trading your games kids so another game with that weird trapezoid cover revenant i feel like i've heard of this game no idea what this is unique combat dynamic promises action far more frenzied than the commonly found in an rpg so it looks like an action maybe diablo style rpg of course up there Lady's like, ah, oh, save me, hero. And you're like, I might murder you instead. Never heard of this game, but I'm immediately a fan of the cover. Darkstone. Action RPG of the Year by GameSpy. A lot of praise on this. No idea what this is. God, it looks like it's from 1999. Thief, monk, warrior, and sorceress. So is it just a typical action RPG? Looks like it might be. Never heard of it. DSi created it. But I love the buy yeah, it's action RPG. Yep. Never heard of it. Looks awesome. Love the cover at the very least. Unleash the power of magic in an epic quest against the forces of evil. Lords of Magic. Hastings book and music video. This must be where it was bought. Top down RPG it must be. Lords of the Realm 2, which I actually have. Same company. That, that intrigues me because I love Lords of the Realm. Never heard of it, but it's kind of a cool cover. Oh, this could not look any more atypical 90s sci-fi. This looks like a clone trooper. Crusader, no remorse. Oh, badass. He has no remorse, but he is from Star Wars before the prequels were out, maybe. Non-stop action from a different perspective. Origin game. Um, Top-down tactics game, looks like. 15 missions, 16 weapons. Some uh, live action movies in there. I mean, I'll give it a shot because I love tactics games, but holy crap, it's just, it's a red, it's a red clone trooper. And to finish the collection of uh, Age of Empires 1 and 2, uh, there you go, Age of Empires 2, only has a CD in it. Uh, would love to get the book at some point. Again, not complaining, that's, it's still awesome to have it with a box, it's in incredible shape. Uh, that's usually the hardest part. Super happy to have it though. All right, no idea what this is, but it's Sierra, Arthur C. Clarke, and Gentry Lee present Rama for the limits of adventure and beyond. So point and click adventure game, one of the best sci-fi games ever by CG Choice Awards. It looks like an adventure game. Never heard of it, but it's it's got that 90s like let's mix 90s CGI with live action. That'll look believable. Trust me, they won't they won't notice. Uh, that's awesome and hilarious. Speaking of adventure games, uh, as you saw before, I do have the Zork trilogy. But there were other Zork games that came later that were, did not sell as well, nor did they were they really all that good. 
Zork Nemesis was one of such things. One of the final Zork games that were ever made. You can see it, it tried to go that 90s route of like graphics and not text-based, which I think was one of Zork's obviously strongest aspects was that it was text adventure. And it's what makes it timeless, really. Your imagination creates what is read in front of you. And it looks like there's more Zork where that came from. This it probably came first. Return of Zork. This is a really heavy box. I assume it came first, but again, wow. Look at that. Ugh, what a beefcake, am I right? And then the last Zork game, the Zork Anthology, the original five text adventures. So I have one, two, and three in the 1983 Collector's Edition, uh, which comes with a coin and everything. It's actually over there on my shelf. But this comes with Z Beyond Zork and Zork Zero, which I've never played. This looks hilarious. The Daedalus Encounters. Look at that face. She looks incredibly not worried at all. Starring Tia Carrier. Never, never heard of her before. Virgin game. So my guess is it's, it's an FMV adventure game. Yeah, that looks to be exactly what it is. Mega Star Power, Tia Carrier from True Lies, Wayne's, and Wayne's World, and Christian Bosher, Comedy Central's Limbo Land. How old is this game? Early 2000s, it must be. We got another Tom Clancy game. This is a game I definitely played when I was a kid. Uh, Rogue Spear. Boom, right there for you. Action game of the year. Great game, honestly. Really, really good. Tactical, like, realistic. I just, I mean, what can you say? Tom Clancy games back then were, were great. Not that they're not good now, but they were different back then. So this is really cool to have. Uh, I remember my dad playing it. Never was allowed to play it. Uh, or ne not necessarily ne never was allowed. Never played it, though, because it looked too scary. Quake 2, Inbox. Don't know if it's complete Inbox. I'm actually going to look right now because I need to know because this is just a game I have to own complete. So if it's missing something, I'll see if I can go after it. Well, it has the instruction manual and the CD. Uh, it doesn't have any of like the the buying brochures that's not a huge deal but it has the instruction manual and that is what's important to me that's great quake 2 oh oh what a freaking classic civilization 2 i just re recently picked up alpha and centauri super happy to have it civ 2 uh fantastic game obviously old and plays old but there's a reason these games are, are considered timeless for a lot of reasons civ 2 so happy to so happy to have it and then finally we have Fallout 2. Again, only the CD, which is a little disappointing, but again, I, I'm not going to complain about it. I'll try to pick up the manuals at some point. Fallout 2, man, I'm just missing the big, awesome Fallout 1 box. This is really cool to have. Incredibly happy to have it in the, the box at least. Again, one of the hardest parts is getting the box. And it has, still has the plastic wrap on it. It was open from the bottom. This is awesome. I'm so happy to have it. Apologies for the weird close-up, that's gonna be it. Uh, I have a ton of games everywhere, so my, my standing space for the usual live action stuff is taken up. I'm gonna go put that up there. I'll take some pictures once the collection is up. I already took some before pictures, so you can see it all in action. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this really long kind of unboxing video. If you're sending me stuff, just let me know ahead of time, so I know to make sure to check my P.O. box and stuff. Uh, and thank you, Zerbite, again. This is an incredible amount of stuff that you hooked me up with, and I'm very, very, very thankful for. And uh, I promise to take good care of this stuff. Thank you guys for watching. I love you so much. And I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.